So this isn't my normal type of video, but as a fan of this guy's work, um, big fan, um, yesterday on New Year's Eve, it was announced on social media that a legendary hip hop lyricist, MF Doom, passed away two months ago on October 31st, 2020. And I just wanted to make a um, just a short video uh, about um, MF Doom in case you're not um, aware or a fan. I know that I have, um, there has to be <laughs> plenty of MF Doom fans in my audience, um, but even if there aren't, it doesn't matter to me. I just felt like I needed to make a video today. Um, so his... Uh, what he would describe his government name as uh, uh, as Doom referred to it on his records was Daniel Dumoulay. Many called him uh, Dumoulay or just Doom. And, um, you know, he's, in, in the world of hip-hop, he's often imitated, um, but certainly has never been duplicated. And, you know, Doom was, was often dubbed uh, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, right? He's like this, he's like the guy that most people in the mainstream have never heard of, but some of the large mainstream hip hop artists, <laughs> he was their favorite rapper, right? And so Doom left behind a very special kind of legacy, um, not only as a creative genius um, and a performer, but even more, important, uh, more importantly, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, he left a legacy as a man. He left a legacy as a husband. He left a legacy as a father. Even more important than what he's known for publicly. Okay. Doom's evolution from Zev Love X in KMD, um, which was his, to my knowledge, his first... Um, rapper name and he was in um he must have been 17 he's not he's not that much he wasn't that much older than i am he must have been 17 when he was in that third base video uh the gas face uh which is a classic video i think it came out in like 88 or 89 and um that was the first time i heard about him and i thought he was really good um and then of course you have like peach fuzz uh, it's very. It was, that was a a big song for KMD, and there there was a, there was a few others too. But um, you know, after after Doom struggles with losing his brother, he lost his brother and musical partner Sub Rock in 1993. Uh, they did several records together under the name KMD. Um, after that happens, you know, by 1999. Operation Doomsday, Doom's uh, first record, his first solo record came out. Um, I think, you know, that most certainly led to the eccentric mad villain that we know and love today in MF Doom. And what hit me especially the hardest wasn't the fact that we've lost one of the greatest rappers ever to do it, period, right? Because after all, uh, the personas that... Daniel Dumoulay invented were just that. They were only personas. They were, they were created from the imagination. That's something that we all do, by the way, <laughs> just in our own, <laughs> our own idea of self. And he played a lot with this, right? Um, if, if, uh, I know that there are people that know what I'm talking about. This may sound a little strange, but, um, he played with this persona because I, I feel like he realized something really profound and really important um, during his lifetime. And whether we're missing the persona we know as MF Doom or uh, Victor Vaughn or Mad Villain or any of the other personas uh, that he came up with, these personas that he created will live on forever through his music, right? So to me, uh, there isn't a loss there right that's not the big that's not what hit me the hardest so it wasn't the loss of these musical characters that affected me it was the words from his own wife who announced 
uh, Doom's passing on social media. Now, Doom was notoriously a private person. If you watch any of his interviews, you can see him thinking very carefully about his responses to questions, not to mention the fact that he stated on several occasions that he doesn't want to say too much about himself. He he realizes and he knows that there's a there is a difference between who he is um, in his world with his family and friends versus his public persona. And this was because he wasn't confusing his persona with who he truly was as a person, despite the insistence from fans to the contrary. And oftentimes this sort of insistence or a persona worship um, can often and does lead to a distorted sense of self and an inflated ego, right? Um, the fans and, and your handlers and your uh, the people around you are telling you how great you are, how great you are, and that's one form of persona worship. And then you start to worship your own persona as a performer, and we see that time and time again with... Um, in the world of celebrity, especially, you know, with, with hip hop, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of that going on because that's, you know, it's very boastful. You have to, you have to have a certain, uh, level of moxie, a certain ego just to get out there and do that kind of thing. But doom was different and everybody knew it. Uh, everybody knows doom is completely different in that way. And there was something really mysterious about him. And you know, what little we know, about Doom as a person through his music and his interviews, uh, fans always knew, at least I felt this, and I know a lot of Doom fans felt this, there was far more than meets the eye and the ear when it came to this legendary hip hop artist. There's no doubt about that. But at the end of it all, nobody was more themselves through their music. As, as paradoxical as that is, you know, Doom created all these different personas on these different records throughout the years. And yet he was, his, his real true self came through in a lot of ways, even though despite he had these personas. And that's just the paradox of existence. I mean, he was a genius of his music, of course. He was a genius of himself. And... He was very, uh, he was very, at least the, the impression I get is, I didn't know him personally, but um, he was, he seemed very deeply aware of the true nature of identity. And he played with this notion. Nobody played with this notion better uh, than Doom did. He, he had fun with this notion of identity and he created all of these personas through that. I don't know if a lot of people picked up on that, but I think uh, there's a fair amount of Doom fans who understood this is what he was doing. So even the fact that his death occurred on October 31st, which is a full two months before it was announced publicly, uh, there's no doubt this will most certainly add to the mystique of one of hip hop's most legendary artists uh, who ever picked up the microphone. So I wanna end this uh, eulogy or memorial of sorts by reading the announcement from his wife made just yesterday on December 31st, 2020, because her words are truly uh, inspirational. I'd say they're also aspirational. So as I read this from his wife, I want you to think about your own legacy in life not in terms of becoming famous or anything like that. Because for Doom, it wasn't about being famous. He wasn't after that. He said that many times. But I want you to think about the legacy you are building right now with the time you have on this planet. What are you doing uh, for the people in your own life? Right? What will your family and friends say about you after you're gone. And I'm not talking about the things that people say just because they feel pity for the dead, right? <laughs> uh, 
but what they really think about you, what did they think about you during the time you were alive? Like, what do they truly think about you? What do they, what do they feel about you? Right. That's what I'm talking about. That's the legacy I'm talking about. And I want to end this uh, by reading the announcement uh, from uh, Doom's wife, which was made yesterday. And, and I think her words are something to aspire to just for all of us. It's just, it's both aspirational and inspirational, like I said. And as I read this, um, think about your own life's legacy, right? Uh, what are you building right now? I mean, we're, we, we've we just come into the new year. This is 2021 now. Um, what are you doing in your life to make connections, to make um, a real difference for other people, right? Um, what are you doing uh, in your life? How are you treating the people in your family? How are you treating your friends? How are you treating yourself, right? So this is uh, this was the post made yesterday from... Um, Doom's wife, begin all things by giving thanks to the all, to Dumale, and I apologize if I get choked up here because <laughs> this just hit me so hard, the greatest husband, father, teacher, student, business partner, lover, and friend I could ever ask for. Thank you for all the things you have shown taught and given to me, our children and our family. Thank you for teaching me how to forgive beings and give another chance not to be so quick to judge and write off. Thank you for showing me how not to be afraid to love and to be the best person I could ever be. My world will never be the same without you. Words will never express what you and Malachi mean to me. He lost his son Malachi, if you don't know, in 2017 uh, of December. His son was uh, 14. And she continues by saying, I love you both and adore you always. May the all continue to bless you, our family and the planet. All my love, Jasmine. Transitioned October 31, 2020. Okay, so that's it. I will see you guys on the next video.